Good evening. Welcome to the Southbridge School Committee meeting of Tuesday, October 3rd, 2017, 7 p.m. Uh, roll call, please. Bishop. Present. Ms. Duval. Present. Mr. Lazo. Present. Dr. Page. Present. Ms. Peliquin. Excused. Mix Ryan. Present. Mr. Thomo. Present. Six present, one excused. Thank you. Uh, can we all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Public input. At this time, is there anybody from the audience that would like to come forward and address the South School Committee this evening? Once again, is there anybody in the audience that would like to come forward and address the school committee? If seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number four, discussion of minutes of our September 12, 2017 meeting. Any corrections or additions, deletions? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item five, old business, field trip update. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, two updates for tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome uh, Kathleen Catarat, our esteemed principal of the West Street School, uh, who will come before the podium tonight to tell us about an opportunity to have fifth grade students, I do believe, go to uh, Nature's Classroom. And uh, Ms. Catarat has done a tremendous amount of work to organize this and to help support um, our students so that financially it's very possible uh, for us to take um, our students uh, to be able to attend this field trip and I'm really pleased uh, for her to be here tonight to share with you this exciting opportunity for our students. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Welcome, Ms. Cadillac. In front of you, you have a proposal that is being presented to the committee um, on behalf of the fifth grade at West and Charlton Street Schools. The Nature Cl Nature's Classroom Program was founded in 1972 by Dr. John G. Santos. Nature's Classroom is a private nonprofit organization that provides educational programs to schools throughout the Northeast. Currently, no Nature's Classroom operates 14 different residential facilities in New England, and there is a Nature's Classroom located in Charlton, our neighboring town. Over the past several years, Mr. Santos has worked with teachers from the elementary schools and offered them the day program at no cost. Typically in the past, with permission, we've had the opportunity to go to the nature's classroom for the day. Mr. Santos met with myself and our fifth grade team a few weeks ago. Um, I want to give credit where credit is due. Ms. Stacy Chaucey Hayes, one of our fifth grade teachers, has um, a connection with Mr. Santos, who has in the past offered the free day trips. We sat with him a few weeks ago, and he shared the full details of the program and explained how students from inner cities and other places go and spend days and weeks. So we asked him if he would be able to provide us with an overnight opportunity. The um, proposal that we have in front of you, you have the overview of Nature's Classroom. You also have a sample basic schedule and a sample special interest programming. We are asking if we could go for one overnight, since this would be our first time for fifth graders. We were able to talk to him about a cost. If we go in the fall, it's cheaper than the spring. And he is offering this to the students for $40 for the night. And we're hoping to ask students through permission slips and funded by parents um, if we can offer this trip to our students this fall. So West Street has um, chosen a date for late October. We've submitted the proposal to the Charlton Street administration. I think they would have to go on a different night, but the same deal applies for both um, buildings so that all fifth graders would have the opportunity to experience this um, environmentally um, pro, you know, charged program, but also get an experience of an overnight that our students deserve. 
Great. So as we've done in the past, uh, I'm really glad to bring an idea like this before the committee. And Mr. Bishop, I'll turn it to you then yeah. to uh, moderate. Well, first of all, are there any members from any, uh, uh, any questions from any uh, committee members? Uh, uh, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. For you. Um, my question is, you said there was a cost to the students of through the parents of $40. What about those families who are financially strapped and can't afford $40 for the students to go, for the children to go? Absolutely. So we talked to Mr. Santos just to give you some background. Typically, it's um, $135 per night for the cost. Um, he cut the cost to 80. We expressed to him that we were concerned that students would be struggling to pay that, and he cut it down to 40. What we're planning on doing is asking parents to pay the $40, and then any students that cannot afford to cover the cost would be covered through student activities, fee funding that we have in our budget, or fundraisers, um, and we are planning on asking the PTA to pay for the buses, which they usually do. Good, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Page? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, one question. So how is the... Um is this going to occur during the regular school year? Yes. So it would be, the the programs actually follow the standards for science, technology, engineering. So it is it will be counted as a school day. Um, the date that we're looking at happens to be a Monday. So students would come to school. They would take attendance and get breakfast in the classroom. Mr. Santos is also providing for that $40, not only um, the use of the facilities and a fully staffed program, but also snack, lunch, dinner, breakfast the next morning. Um, and I'm not sure about the lunch, it, whether we'll be there or not, but they'll be providing that for us. So we will be going. Um, from school on a Monday morning, spending the night, and then returning back to school in time for buses Tuesday afternoon. Okay, thank you. Um, one comment, comment. I, I'd actually make a comment that I think this is absolutely a fantastic experience, and I think that the district should move towards having more of this kind of activity for our students. I particularly, in particular myself, I spent a week at a camp like this in the woods, in a cabin with four or five students and a chaperone that was probably a, I don't know, high school senior, I don't know how they did it or whatever at that time. And it was absolutely wonderful. And I think this is really a great thing that, um, that in particular our students could benefit from, from a lot of areas of uh, sort of the pedagogical uh, uh, sort of avenues and so forth. So I, I think this is a good start. But I would like to see us uh, sort of expand these kind of programming more into the future. So um, I, I'm in full support. Thank you. Mr. Tomo. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, once this is completed, could you or someone from school just give us a follow-up um, report on how it went? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And we are looking for chaperones, if anyone on the committee is interested. Um, just to let you know that we did um, work it out with our faculty that we do have some teachers who were willing and able to spend the night and others that may have small children. So it was the, the faculty decided that um, obviously the fifth grade teachers will be there during the day and any teachers who, are, who wish to spend the evening are welcome and those that just can't for whatever reason um, will just meet the students on the second day of work there at the site in Charlton and um, there will always be an administrator, myself or Miss Murray um, from West Street there for the evening and also um, we're recruiting our school adjustment counselors so there will be not only the full staff of the Nature's Classroom program, but also representation overnight from our buildings. No? Go ahead. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, you said in October, you didn't give a date. Uh, so we wanted to get approval first, so we have submitted um, through the district the standard um, request for approval for um, a field trip. <laughs> We have penciled in a date for um, October 30th. We didn't want to do Halloween <laughs> in the woods. Um, and there were other dates available, like I said, that if Charlton Street opts in, then they can pick another date um, and work it out with Mr. Santos themselves if they wanted to take advantage of this opportunity. 
And how many students would that entail? So there are 75 um, fifth graders at West Street, and I'm not sure. About 80. Yeah, about the same. About the same. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I, too, think it's a great opportunity for our students. Anytime we can open their eyes to what's out there. Uh, and, and it's uh, overnight with fifth graders. Good luck with that. But I'm, I'm <laughs> sure you, you. I know you can handle it. We'll come back and tell you I all know. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Catara. <clears throat> okay, moving along to, uh, yeah, okay, moving along to new business. Budget so, subcommittee report. Um, thank you, Mr. Bishop, through you. Um, I, I took some notes yesterday. I will have a more formal report finalized by the end of the week. Um, the uh, school board had their first budget subcommittee meeting uh, yesterday on Tuesday the 2nd at 4.30. Um, in attendance was Mr. Bishop, myself, um, the receiver, uh, Seth, and um, Seth Racine, the uh, business manager, and um, citizen Martina Shea. Um, Mr. Bishop um, called the meeting to order at 4.30 p.m. Um, he welcomed, um, pointed out that it was the first subcommittee um, meeting we've had since the state takeover, and um, we discussed the um, role of the committee. Uh, we were going to, for fiscal year 17, um, fiscal year 17, um, do some invoice summarizations. Um, for fiscal year 18, review it, uh, and mainly focus on fiscal year 19. Uh, to, uh, the main role of the committee was to understand fiscal year 18 and to build the fiscal 19 budget along with side the uh, receiver. Um, Mr. Bishop asked if the current budget was within means. Uh, the receiver stated yes, tight, but living within our means. Um, he, Mr. Bishop commented that this would be uh, helpful for the eventuality of full school, school board independence, um, the necessity of these subcommittees. Uh, the receiver commented that good governance requires an understanding at, uh, at all levels of what is happening and was happy to uh, work with us. And then we got a presentation from Mr. Racine. Um, the receiver has stated that he will send this, a copy of this presentation out to all the members of the committee, and I believe a copy will be available as well um, on the website or um, in public record in some form. Sure, I'll follow up on if we'll post it publicly, but definitely to all the school committee members, no question. Thank you. Um, we um, just we went over what the definitions of fiscal year were, um, how the fiscal year operates um, within the state of Massachusetts compared to um, at the federal level, the differences with that. We also, um, he gave us a year by, uh, fiscal year by fiscal year overview of what we were doing over the next four months um, pertaining to that fiscal year. With, for fiscal year 2017, we were um, in July and August, we paid bills um, for work completed, completed at the end of the June. Um, as well as through September, we're gonna be making those final grant budget payments, uh, drawn downs, final amendments before the end of the fiscal year. And in September and October of this year, we're going to be completing the end of the year fiscal report to DESE. And for fiscal year 18, we're gonna be, um, we opened the new fiscal year um, in July and in August received new grant awards. In both July and August, we um, bought goods and services for the start of the year and we hired staff. For September and October, we, um, are, gonna, we are and currently applying for grants and setting those grants up and reviewing any potential um, unforeseen costs. As well, um, now for fiscal year 2019, for September and October, we're now creating the budget um, development timeline as well as um, for this, the month of October, um, project next year's cost based on data from the new school. Um, for, we had a budget update as well. Um, while we are closing out the last year's fiscal budget, um, we're also preparing for the um, fiscal year 19 budget. And the biggest um, obstacle we were going to be facing um, this year was the Old Sturbridge Academy Charter School, um, which was approved by the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education in February 2017. Uh, I would say opened in August with 160 students in the kindergarten to third grade, but will grow to 360 students from kindergarten to eighth grade. And there are approximately 68 students attending from the town of Southbridge this year. 
the rate at which each student will be charged at the school district will be $13,155 um, for a total assessment for fiscal year 2018 of 908140 but we will be reimbursed by the state for $614,871. Now, it was also brought to the subcommittee's attention that for the coming year, um, it is likely that the state will not reimburse us for current students attending, but will provide some sort of a reimbursement for new students that leave the district to attend. Um, this, is, this was met to quite a dismay to the subcommittee members. Um, um, both Mr. Bishop and I had questions pertaining to this uh, development. Um, I believe Mr. Bishop will speak to his question more thoroughly. Um, but again, my question was, I believe, and Mr. Bishop's were pertaining to the costs and how it wasn't really sustainable for the district going forward to be losing this much money to an out-of-town charter school. And So then he provided us, um, Mr. Racine provided us um, an overview of the fiscal 2019 uh, budget development timeline. In the month of November, um, we are, they are going to be finalizing uh, priorities. And in December and January, they're going to be creating the fiscal 19 year plan. Um, provide, in January, providing the town um, the fiscal year 19 applications while also during that time training uh, the principals about the budget. In February and March, they will create the fiscal year 19 budget documents to submit to the town. Um, the Southbridge Public Schools will submit that and roll out the budget allocations to the schools and departments. In March, they will share the fiscal year 19 budget plan with the school committee. Um, the town um, will present the budget to the town council and in April, they will uh, review, uh, the, the fiscal 19 year budget will be reviewed by the subcommittees and during that time, both during March and April, they will support principals in the budget process as they work to finalize their plans. In April, May and June, they will be implementing and support, um, implement and support stakeholders in this process um, and they hope to have the fiscal year 19 um, budget approved by the town council and start implementing the school budget plans, hiring, purchasing, et cetera, um, which will be earlier in the process this year compared to what it was uh, this last fiscal year, which didn't happen until, if I'm correct, July and August was the, when we started hiring. And that was the conclusion of that report from Mr. Racine. Um, just looking over my notes. We discussed then the frequency of our meetings. Um, we are planning to have one every couple of months with our next one being at some point in December and then having another one um, in the month of February as we start and have them more frequently going on from there because that's when the budget season will get very intense. So um, that concludes my notes. Um, Mr. Bishop, please feel free to add anything I have missed. No, thank you for taking accurate notes and reporting out to the uh, people at home and the people sitting here this evening what took place yesterday afternoon. Anybody have any questions of yesterday's meeting? Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, 6B, receive updates. Dr. Johnston. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, actually, I want to take us back to field trips, if you don't mind, okay. just briefly. Uh, the, I appreciated the conversation that we had at our last meeting uh, with, where Mr. Hatch presented on his proposal to take students to Disney World in uh, the spring of 2019. And uh, Mr. Bishop, you had concerns about the travel cost estimate. And uh, again, this is why I want these uh, discussions brought to the school committee. Uh, that was uh, a good uh, catch, um, a, an important thing to, uh, to note. Mr. Hatch went back and asked the uh, transportation company for a more accurate estimate. And it was, in fact, uh, for a higher amount than he was uh, able to show at, at that meeting. Uh, but uh, he and the bus company were able to kind of work out a good timeline for making sure that the costs don't suddenly rise so that we can keep it within means uh, for the um, students who will be invited to go on this field trip. And with the advance notice that this isn't until the spring of 2019, they have plenty of time to prepare. So just enough gratitude for uh, the conversations that we're having about field trips. Uh, so general announcements. Uh, I appreciate the work that the schools have underway right now to support uh, the uh, 
people in Puerto Rico who are uh, experiencing the, the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. And so there are several different recovery efforts going on underway in the district right now. Uh, the middle and high school uh, put their own activities in place to collect non-perishable items and personal care items. Uh, the schools in general, though, have partnered with the local Southbridge for Puerto Rico efforts, and they are also collecting items. So if you come into our schools, you should see uh, boxes uh, in the entryways to our schools where we're collecting uh, perishable items, non-perishable items. Uh, and we've also begun to receive calls uh, that we anticipate having some families uh, coming here from Puerto Rico. This will be a phenomenon experienced uh, throughout Massachusetts uh, this fall as uh, we anticipate that some families will want to uh, get away from the island right now and uh, enroll their children uh, in our schools. So more to come on that. I think it will be an important thing just for us all to, uh, to watch and take note of. Now, we had our uh, full day of professional development last Friday. Uh, I was pleased to get around to see much of it uh, across the district. The elementary level, we had, I thought, some very um, important professional development going on related to English language arts curriculum and also related to intervention uh, and how we will support students in intervention uh, in our schools, in our elementary schools. At the middle and high school, uh, it was actually pretty exciting to see our middle and high school teachers working together by content area uh, to be working on how they will set up their assessments for this year and further develop their, their curriculum and their alignment of curriculum across grade levels. Uh, so it was great to see our teachers working very productively together and learning together in professional development. Our next day is October 20th. The, uh, we are visiting schools on a regular basis and getting a chance to observe uh, classrooms, so uh, staff from the central office, including myself, uh, have a regular schedule for being in schools. This week I'll be at Charlton Street and the middle school. No, the high school, I'm sorry. Charlton Street on Thursday, the high school on Friday, uh, so that we are um, regularly just getting a chance to work with the principals and the staff around um, our, our strengths and our challenges and continue to improve together. Uh, we are um, Finalizing our school improvement plans, uh, if you recall, I told you that this was an important <coughs> element that we're trying to bring to bear this year of the schools owning the improvement process. Uh, instead of, you know, we have a turnaround plan for the district, but what does it mean for each and every school? And a requirement uh, by law is that our, our school site councils are actually meeting and reviewing uh, the plans. And so we uh, set a deadline of uh, the 29th of September, I do believe the deadline was, right around there. And uh, the schools met the deadline uh, and uh, were able to review uh, their school improvement plans with parents from the uh, community and uh, get that approval so that we have uh, kind of a shared understanding of where each of the schools are going. Um, as you recall, uh, at our last meeting, we had uh, Mr. Matt Brunel with us asking questions about uh, what you would like to see in the next receiver. Uh, in addition, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but we also uh, asked our students um, at certain grade levels, our families, uh, and our staff to respond to a survey uh, to tell us about what their experiences are in our schools as well as what they want to see in the next receiver. And that information, particularly on um, what they're experiencing in our schools, is useful baseline information so we can continue to monitor our progress and see what kind of satisfaction, frankly, do we have. Um, with the educational uh, services that we're providing to students. And so uh, we're compiling those data right now and um, using it for baseline, as I said, and also for the selection of the next receiver. Mr. Bishop, I think we have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's fine. Uh, I, just, I, I have a couple of questions. One, um, on that last uh, point about the surveys, um, is there any way the school committee can get a summarization of what the students were feeling and what they expressed overall as their chief students, families, etc. Is there any way we can get a summarization of that as school committee members so that way we know? So that's a great idea for our next school committee meeting. I'd love to bring those data and share them with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, my next uh, question is, this is a wonderful um, piece of information. Um, uh, going forward, though, I would really like it if it was included within our packet um, so I'd have more time to review this because there is a lot of information here. and. There is questions that come up, but I would like to have more time next time to digest it. Obviously, there's things that happen that have to, you know, in a timely fashion that you can't provide beforehand, but a lot of these I'm going through could have been provided in our packet, so I'd really appreciate if they were included going forward. Certainly, I hear your concern, and I'm one to not want to overpromise mm -hmm. and underdeliver, <laughs> and so let me take it under consideration and um, hopefully be able to respond to that, that good idea. Okay, thank you. Let's move forward. 
uh, before you go on, can I, can I ask, uh, will the uh, school improvement plans be online for each of the buildings? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I hadn't considered it, and so let me think it through, but it makes sense that we would I want to post our school improvement plans. Yes, so. I, I, would, I would recommend it. Yeah. Great. Um, also, just wanted to take a minute tonight to thank uh, local organizations that have made um, important donations to our schools. And so at Charlton Street School, uh, an appreciation to Nichols College for crayons, pencils, markers, paper, erasers, and other school supplies. Uh, Cornerstone Bank, a $200 donation for a musical presentation, uh, Bombadilla Key, uh, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, New Vision Church, uh, $500 to purchase playground sports equipment and the United Way is using their breakfast event to ask uh, each guest to bring in a sporting goods donation for our students. At West Street School, uh, Harrington Physician Services and One Worcester Homes Realty uh, provided a back to school backpack drive uh, that included school supplies for the start of the school year. Uh, at Southbridge Middle High School, um, we have the, at both schools, uh, the House of Destiny Church uh, at the start of the school year created a breakfast event for all teachers during the professional development week. Uh, I got to see it in action. Uh, I didn't have a chance to have a bite, but it was exciting. <coughs> to, the teachers felt very appreciated by that. Uh, Southbridge Academy, uh, AA Transportation, our transportation company, is providing a bus once a week to transport a group of students to the YMCA during the school day, and they are not charging us for that transportation. And then district-wide, uh, Elm Street Congregational Church uh, has provided five boxes of school supplies to be used wherever they are needed the most. And in addition, uh, AA Transportation has uh, donated two buses for uh, five hours uh, for that new teacher orientation that we had back in August. I know more donations uh, will be coming, and I'll uh, be glad to continue to thank uh, local organizations for their support of our public schools. Uh, finally, I just want to um, come back to you with uh, an update on the receiver search. Uh, as I mentioned, Mr. Brunel is finishing up those, uh, the survey and compiling the data, as well as the last um, session that he had with staff was today. Um, so he's finalizing uh, the input that he's getting from uh, various sources. He'll be providing that to us and uh, we will then soon be launching um, a, uh, a full search with the posting of a, um, a job description and we will be using the data that we get from him uh, that you all have provided to um, post for the qualifications that we want for this position. So that's coming a little later in October. Uh, we've set a goal for ourselves of getting it up somewhere around October 11th. Again, not wanting to overpromise, but uh, we, uh, I think that I'll have a posting going up around October 11th and um, the process carrying forward from there. And, um, and then finally, uh, the point to make about our mentoring and induction program uh, for our, our new teachers is underway. Um, it's an important component uh, to make sure that they receive the in, uh, support that they need as they get started in the district, as well as uh, the hours that they need in order to advance their licensure. And so uh, both components are included in our mentoring and induction program. Can I ask a question on the mentoring program? We have, at last count, 70 plus new staff this year. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Last year we had about the same number. Right. What, who, who are we using for mentoring with, with this uh, sizable number of new staff? Where are we getting the mentors? Sure, sure. So the mentors are from within our district. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, uh, we posted and we have uh, staff who are working with us right now uh, who are vetted for that and they are providing those types of supports. Sometimes it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes we have a mentor working with several new so, teachers okay. uh, to be able to provide them that experience. I mean, it is, it is a sizable task to come up with that many mentors for so many new inexperienced staff. Any other questions for the receiver? Ms. Ryan. <clears throat> um, at the last meeting you had stated that, I believe I could be wrong, but I remember um, one or two teaching staff positions being open at the beginning of the school year. Have you had any luck in filling those positions? Certainly so. At the last meeting I mentioned that we had a math teacher for Southbridge Academy. That position has been filled. I've interviewed that person, that gentleman who will be starting with us momentarily uh, within the next few days. However, there are now other openings mm -hmm. uh, in the district and we continue to work uh, to fill them. And so. uh, what, do you remember offhand what positions <coughs> those were that were open now? So, sure, so right now we have posted for the director of Southbridge Academy mm -hmm. uh, and we also have a um, posting for an elementary uh, dual language first grade teacher as well. They come to mind, uh, I apologize if there are others I don't have. An exhaustive list on uh, Mr. Tomo. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, for the receiver, um, 
Do you have exit interviews if someone is leaving? Do you talk to them about why they're leaving? Or because a lot of places have that type of sure. Mm -hmm. So the the um, individuals who, for example, the ones that I just mentioned, I've met with both uh, individuals about um, their decisions right now and and what's uh, you know what's at stake right now, and so. Um, it's something that we need to more formalize, uh, right. but particularly as we begin this school year, as uh, we get this school year underway, uh, we are making sure that we have an understanding of why people might be leaving at this time. Especially if they're uh, going to a, another school district, uh, you know, why are they going? What is it that, the, you know, the reasons why they are leaving, basically? Yes, absolutely. And maybe we can learn from that or do better. Right. If we need to do better. I know sometimes people leave not on their own, they just must be terminated for whatever reason, but I think, you know, some kind of a formal exit interview would be very useful uh, for our system. Certainly. Appreciate the comment. Yeah. I'll go ahead, Mr. Vall. Uh, with this problem that happened in Las Vegas, was there any kind of uh, fallback or something in schools this week? It's a good question. Um, so there actually wasn't anything that we specifically did in the schools. We, um, we wanted to make sure that we really maintain normalcy as what we always want to do. We think that it's important for students to feel safe in our schools. However, um, one of the really important things that we've taken on this year is to make sure that we um, further emphasize safety in our schools. And so all of our teachers were trained this year in just standard operating procedures for handling emergencies and uh, multi-hazard crisis intervention in our schools. So how do we conduct a shelter in place? How do we conduct a lockdown? Where would we go if there was an evacuation? We've actually taken that to the students to make sure that they know uh, what's happening. We've also informed the parents in writing, um, in Spanish and English, about what to expect in the schools this year so that they're aware and can speak to their children about um, the importance of uh, following directions when um, a command like a lockdown might come through. Okay. Uh, the other important thing is that we've teamed up with the police and the fire department around this, and this month we'll be conducting um, practice lockdowns in each of the schools that will be co-conducted um, by both the police department and the fire department and the school department. Uh, we don't want to say when, um, because we want uh, to make sure that uh, that preparation is uh, is in place so that schools are ready at any time uh, that they might need to uh, to be ready to go into lockdown or shelter in place um, so it feels like a good team up between the school department and the police department in particular around school safety um, was there any uh, any things brought up by children today about the uh, you know in school that maybe disturbed them or something did you get any kind of report about that you know, nothing has come to me, uh, but it's a good question, and I'd um, certainly be, uh, you know, mindful of anything that principals would um, also bring forward if they had concerns that they couldn't handle. I think that um, we have a very strong counseling staff, and um, I'm appreciative of the work that I know that they've been doing to support our kids during this challenging time. I mean, it bothered me. I sure might have bothered some of these younger kids, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions for Lucifa? All right, if not, we're going to move on to member forum. <clears throat> Any members have anything they'd like to bring forward to this evening? Oh, did I miss something? Oh, excuse me. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, yes, uh, new business C, next meeting, Tuesday, November 14th, 2017, at 7 p.m. in these chambers. I don't think we vote on that. It's just a statement of fact, I guess. Okay, now we can move on to members forum. <laughs> Any members have anything they'd like to bring forward this evening? Mr. Lazo. Just a couple of quick um, <clears throat> quick points. One, um, the budget subcommittee, if the meetings are at 4.30, I'd love to attend, but my job, my businesses don't allow me to do it at 4.30. Normally we used to have uh, subcommittees around 7, but something a little later would be better for me. But if not, carry on. I, I won't be attending. Um, just one other issue that I have that was brought to my attention by some alumni and some existing uh, parents. Um, there was a policy voted when we built a new high school that we redid the mascot 
because everybody was putting in whatever mascot they wanted for a pioneer. And so to stabilize what our th uh, pioneer looked like, we went back to 1960, recreated the pioneer, and that was the pioneer for the district, and we put it in the form of a policy with our school colors, because depending on the athletic director, they'd add blue, black, uh, trim colors, and really we are similar to Alabama, which is red and white. So to stop the constant, if an athletic director changes or a coach or a, uh, uh, a cheering squad coach, uh, we tried to stabilize the colors and keep the tradition in place for the red and the white and the pioneer with the musket and the Daniel Boone Coonskin hat. That was done by the Hall of Fame committee, the alumni, the existing students at that time. The policy was voted in and since then what we've had is we've had some turnover in the athletic director's position and, and some of the coaches and uh, it seems like when you see your cheerleaders come out in black uniforms uh, or different colors than what we actually should have, uh, I think, and, I, and I, I know we have a new athletic director, uh, I have not met him yet, he's outreached, I, I just haven't met him and I, I'd love to because there's some history here that needs to be preserved uh, for not only the past but the future of Southbridge High School and Southbridge School System. Uh, it was put there by many other pioneers and would like to be upheld by the future pioneers. So I just would like to see the, the uniforms uh, instead of solid black cheering uniforms, it would be red and white. All the other schools keep their uh, green and gold, green and white, or whatever they are. So I just wanted to bring it up. It, it's been a, a kind of a revolving door, so it, it's like nailing jello on a tree. It's not <coughs> important who did what. But it's if we can redraw the line and try and get ourselves back on track with that one issue, which we all know the educational portion is more, most important, but I think this has a lot to do with our pride and tradition uh, at, at the middle high school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. Anyone else this evening? Just a, just a Mr. Lowe. Yeah. It came up uh, before that I, 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 unfortunately, I haven't gotten the... Uh, the schedule for the football team this year. And did they schedule Tant uh, Tantasqua? Is it scheduled? Yes. It is. Do you know the date by any chance? I apologize, I don't. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mr. Lazo, do you know the date? What was the question? I cannot The question hear. is when is the Southbridge Tantasqua Tantasqua game? Uh, that, fortunately, we almost didn't have a Tantasqua game. Right. Um, the, the athletic director that left said that there is, uh, didn't, he didn't know it was that important. And really, we have the Ted Fowler Memorial Award. We have Bartlett and Tantasco and all the rest of the schedule never mattered. But um, I want to say it is in two weeks. We're playing Millbury this week, and the following week we're playing Tantasco. Okay. At yeah. Tantasco. Oh, okay. Two years in a row. Why are you smiling, Jackie? This brings back a lot of good memories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Tantasco, so... Thank you. Thank you for the information, Mr. Lazo. Our aficionado in the area of football <laughs> for many years. Anyone else have anything? Uh, I, I have a couple things, as I always do, and I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we had an important meeting two weeks ago in the library, and I was hoping that the uh, receiver was going to include it in his, in his announcements. Uh, I, I believe the state representative called the meeting. I'm not exactly who, who called the meeting. But we had a meeting on a Thursday morning down in the, uh, uh, one of the rooms at the library, and it consisted of the state representative, our state senator, Dr. Johnston, several members from the Desi staff, myself, Dr. Page, uh, the chairman of the town council, as well as the town manager. I'm trying to think if I've left any other people out of that. Uh, and it was, it was a candid discussion about uh, the receivers uh, used a good part of the time to bring uh, those folks involved up to date as to what's been taking place in the district since he's come. And, but at then it, it, it whittled down at the end to, uh, I'll have to say, the elephant in the room. Uh, it was alluded to briefly uh, by Ms. Ryan this evening uh, that we talked about during our, during our uh, budget subcommittee, and that is the, the uh, fiscal hardships which, which we are facing based on the opening of a charter school three miles off our shore. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbers are, are, are severe. The, well, we're gonna get by this year with about a $300,000 net loss to the district. That number 
from what I can see based on, you know, and I'm, again, I'm not a, a mathematician, but I am fairly f fiscally responsible. I think we're looking in the, in the area of probably a million dollars that we're going to lose out of our district budget for that school. Uh, that's alarming. But what's more alarming is a couple articles I read this past uh, two weeks in the Boston Globe by, uh, I think it's James, uh, uh, I, I can't think of his name, uh, regarding the uh, chairman of the board of the Department of Education, uh, Paul Sagan, and his financial contributions to organizations trying to establish more charter schools in our Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Uh, the state voting commission has come in and fined, not Mr. Sagan, but the organizations that he donated to, to quite a hefty fine. I think it's probably two and a half times larger than any fines that have been levied. 500,000, if I remember correctly. Uh, thank you. I, I read the article. Uh, this is alarming to me. It should be alarming to every citizen. When we had the gentleman here looking, just asking what we were looking for in our next receiver, my number one answer was ethics. My number one answer is ethics always, and I, I'm really questioning the ethics that allow the, the chairman of the Board of Public Education for this Commonwealth, and I guess it's a free country, but I'm really alarmed and disturbed that this took place, and, and this is the mindset of, of the individual who oversees this Commonwealth schools. It's, it's my personal views. I have been in contact with the Boston Globe. I will be continuing to communicate back and forth with them. And I'm going to share information that I have with them because this is a, an unfortunate circumstance for our district. We cannot afford to have a charter school this close to a level five district. Shame on the Department of Education for doing that to us. Shame on them. We're, we're fighting our tails off to bring this district back, and they're throwing a grenade like that at us. It's just un, unconscionable in my eyes. That's what I'd like to say this evening. Uh, I, I hope everybody has a great Columbus Day. I want to see it at all, all the sporting events, and uh, I think, Bishop, go ahead. One, one comment. I agree uh, wholeheartedly with what you're saying regarding the charter schools, uh, but the fact is that it's here. Now it's up to us to decide how we're going to compete against them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need some kind of a plan on how to compete against them, very simply. Well, I think one way to do it is to come up with programs like this. Well, I mean, we, we're going to have, have to need a plan, with, but with, I agree with what he's saying. It's going to get worse. They're going to add a grade every year, and if we're not going to compete, we're going to be out. Mr. Lazel. And that kind of money, our constituents are going to be very upset when they, when they actually see this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, uh, I wasn't going to comment on it. Uh, the charter school debate continues. Um, Southbridge is in dire straits, and it, 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 it fell even further behind in the past year. Again, you have a state <coughs> government with a state agency, uh, Department of Education, uh, a governor that uh, did a state of the state and said everything's fine in Southbridge. Um, when you go on that side of 128, ethics are thin, and uh, the knowledge of what goes on on the ground out here, the western, the east, central, western part of the state, uh, is probably next to nothing. Uh, I say thank God we have uh, Russell Johnson. I think that he, when he landed here, I would rather see him stay here than find somebody else. But of course, I think he should be the commissioner of education, somebody that actually can listen, can uh, come up with a plan. The state department of education didn't come up with a plan by having a, uh, a level five district and start putting charter schools and everything. I mean, they're fighting themselves. They fight the turnaround with the charter school and it lacks the master plan from the top. So uh, I'm not saying, I mean, if people like charter schools, that's fine. But when you turn around and look at the tax dollars that are being spent in the Southbridge school system to fail, 
well, I shouldn't say fail, but not go to a level five uh, in some areas. I think, you know, again, I always go out there on the elementary <coughs> level, say we're heading in the right direction. And uh, I think we have to work harder at the middle high school. But again, when you lay out a plan to build something, you build it from the foundation up. I think what the state has done is they basically cracked the foundation and said, keep going, Southbridge, but we're going to do this, this, and this. And then donate to it the way they did that ethically. I mean, it's just wrong. But again, um, the further you get away from the people as you go up in government as state rep, state senator, or federal, uh, you, are, you have less, um, how do I say, uh, feet on the ground where you actually know what's going on on the ground. I think I had a great conversation with Russ Johnson, and he said, I would never know what I know if I didn't come here and, and, and sit at this desk. And it, there was a lot to learn because there's a lot of bally who build up politics. You know, this one doesn't like that one. But what about the kids? What about our employees? And I think he's focused on that. And I think we have to turn around not only a district, but we have to turn around what happened in the last year. Uh, nothing's impossible. I agree with... Uh, uh, Spiro Thomo, that you're going to have to compete harder now than you ever had to compete. Now, if you're a competitor, you look forward to the challenge. That, that's what I do. Um, but if you're going to sit back and just let the charter school roll over us, then uh, shame on us. But uh, again, uh, I, I, I am a cautiously optimistic about what's going on in this district. I am very concerned about the budgetary uh, items that we're dealing with and wages at the top. Is it sustainable? That's the reason why I wanted to be uh, involved in the budget. It's, it's not so much, hey, let's make sure we have enough money for this year. I'm looking for the long-term sustainability where this town can afford to do this correctly and, uh, and, and move forward and, and, and keep it when, when they hand it off. Not just hand it off and, okay, we cut everything out and we go back the other way. There's a lot of work ahead, but again, I, I share the... the, the uh, the frustration of the chair uh, with this charter school being put right in our backyard. I really do have a problem with that at this time. Bad timing. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. Um, I would also like to express I, I, my unhappy feelings about this charter school. I, I have been talking about what this charter school was going to do for the last two, through, two to three years since the idea of putting a charter school in Old Street Village came up, when I sat on Tentasco, I was the only member there to talk about what this was going to wreak, or the havoc this was going to wreak in the region. I went to, along with um, school community member Peliquin, went to the first um, open forum meeting with the state over this, and we were the only two school community members at the time to speak out against this, because we saw what was going to come. We saw the dam fiscal damage this was going to wreak. And, and now we're looking here, all of, uh, all of us here, like, oh look, we're losing almost a million dollars this year. We're getting reimbursed only, we're getting reimbursed about two thirds, but next year we're not gonna get reimbursed almost squat. Like, <laughs> we're sitting here, like, this is what happens when you allow private entities like this to compete with public schools and then don't actually have a sustainable funding formula at the state level. This is what has happened. And now we're, we as a district, when we're already having struggles, when we're already level five and having a hard time trying to figure out where we're going to put funds to make sure our students succeed, I now could even have a harder time. And I'm extremely frustrated by this and extremely saddened by the lack of, the reason, I mean, the first time it was denied was because they had just gone into receivership and they didn't want to risk the instability of this region. And then the second year we're in receivership, they go ahead and do it anyways. I wish I could say I didn't see this coming, but we all saw this coming, and it, now we're facing the damages of it. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Anybody else have anything? I, I do want to say that uh, town manager did send a, a letter to uh, town, uh, state rep and our state senator today. He, uh, we were able, I think all of us should have received a copy from uh, uh, Dr. Johnson's office. Uh, the letter was articulating pretty much what we've said here today. So I just want to let the taxpayers know, and uh, we're going to keep fighting for you. We're going to keep fighting to make our schools good. There's not a person up here being paid. Mm -hmm. There's not a person here. I don't think that has children in the school system. So we're here because we believe in our school system. Many of us have been involved for a long time, and we believe in our community. We're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here and fight. Okay, anybody else have anything before I sign off? Ms. Dr. Page? Yeah, um, I, I just want to voice a couple of concerns or opinions that I have about the charter system in general. 
and that is that it, if, if you go and read what the mantra is of a charter school system, it doesn't read any differently than what the mantra is that Desi tells us that a school system should read. So why set up publicly funded competing institutions to compete with one another? I just don't understand the philosophy. Money. And so if there is an issue with underperformance, which we have and we acknowledge and, we've and we acknowledge that we have that and the state has come in and said we're going to help you fix it, how do they help you fix it by setting up another publicly funded uh, district or another publicly funded institution for education that is going to compete with you with the same stated goals as to what they want for education. That's, that, that's my, my current read on the thing, and I would welcome comments, and I would like somebody to, to explain to me otherwise as to why this is a good thing for the, for the public in terms of, of receiving an education funded by the public. So that's, that's really what I want to say is about that subject. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we? Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. See you next month.